Hi, I'm Rowan from Vantage Admissions. In this video, we're going to look at a recent Cambridge computer science interview question. Now, computer science interview questions can skew very mathematical. Sometimes they can be almost indistinguishable from maths interview questions. And in other cases, they can have a far more algorithmic flavour. This question is going to be more of the latter variety. If you'd like more interview questions or broader advice on your interview preparation process, do remember to subscribe and to visit our website. So this is a really classic interview problem, which arises in all sorts of settings, not just uh, Cambridge computer science interviews and of course Oxford interviews as well. This is the sort of thing that's also often seen in, for example, um, technical interviews for say software engineering jobs and so on. Very well known question, but the interviewers don't like to reinvent the wheel. So we shouldn't be surprised to see these sorts of things arising. So this is much more at the you know, explicitly algorithmic end. We're not going to be doing any explicit mathematics here. So we have two robots. They're parachuted in to random positions along an infinite 1D line. So although the line is, you can think of it like an X axis, we're interested in discrete positions. So minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three integer positions. And the robots wish to find each other. Now, the robots have no vision. They can't, for example, look ahead to see in which direction the other robot is. But they do leave behind their parachutes when they start moving. And if they cross the other robot's parachute, they do have an ability to detect it. So we need to issue both of the robots with instructions, which must be built using only the commands go right, go left, and also go to, which can be used to go to another line of code. For example, you can send yourself back to an earlier line in code. This is a very common programming construct. We can also use if, and we have a function parachute, which returns true if the robot's standing on the parachute and false otherwise. So that means we have a function that can detect whether we're currently on the parachute. So the subtlety is we need to issue both robots with the same set of instructions. We can't give a different set to each. We need to find a set of instructions which will guarantee the robots can find each other. So I'd recommend pause the video now, have a go at this question yourself. You'll get far more benefit that way. And if you've had a go or you've decided to skip doing that today, let's now jump in with the question. So the first thing is, I mean, the fact that we need to issue the robots with the same set of instructions seems to be an unfriendly feature of the problem. Because it means that if overall my instruction is to tend to go rightward, say, well, they're both going in the same direction. So if I just set both of them going right, not only might they never meet, they will definitely never meet because they're both traveling in the same direction. The relative positioning won't change. So it's always helpful to identify what it is that makes the problem hard. Sometimes we can use what seems to make the problem hard to our advantage. So how can we overcome the fact that we have to give them the same instructions? Well, there's one feature of the problem we've not really thought about using yet, which is the parachute. So the robots do have an ability to detect the parachute. So intuitively, you know, we should always formulate our algorithms intuitively before we start to code them in. Intuitively, it makes sense if we say, well, once a robot finds a parachute, then it should speed up. So even though, for example, I, I'll set, let's say, both of them going rightwards, if I can construct things so that the robot speeds up once it meets the parachute of the other robot, then it will catch up because they both go rightwards. The one that will meet the other robot's parachute will be the one that started leftwards. And so if I then set that one so it's going relatively faster than the other robot, eventually it will catch and they'll meet. So let's start by, you know, making precise our intuition and then we can think about implementing it with some code. So once a robot detects a parachute, it should speed up. That's all we need to implement. So let's try to build some code to do this. So because we have this, this funny command go to, which we're going to use in lieu of, for example, uh, you know, while loops or for loops, it makes sense to number the lines of code so we can refer which line we're going back to. So I want to start the robot going more slowly than they could because I need to be able to slow them down or, or rather speed them up, in fact, when they meet a parachute. So a nice way to artificially slow the robot down at first is surely to alternate going right and going left. 
So if for the initial stage, I say, well, go right. Now go left. Now go right again. Overall, I've taken three time units, so three sort of steps in code, to move right on net by only one unit because I've staggered with this go left. I'm still going right overall because I've got two rights per one left, but I've artificially slowed myself down so that I can you know, feel the benefit of going faster once I meet the parachute. So overall, these steps have made me go right by one unit. And now what do I want to do in terms of checking for the parachute? Well, if I don't meet the parachute, I want to repeat this. I want to keep going more slowly. So I should say, if not parachute, so parachute would return true if I do find the parachute. Um, so obviously not negates it. So I'm saying, what do I do if I haven't found the parachute? Then I will go to line one. So if I haven't found the parachute, I go back and I keep going through this loop of moving along slowly. But if I don't trigger this line, in other words, if I do find the parachute, then I get to go beyond this to the next block of code. So what do we want the robot to do once it has found the parachute? Well, we just want it to go faster to the right. So now I can make another block, which is just go right and then go to five. So you see here, I just keep going right, going right, going right, going right, going right. No longer artificially staggered with the go left. So that means that once I found the parachute, I'm going faster. And that means because the robot that manages to do this is the one that started to the left, it will manage to catch up. So not too hard a problem, nor is this an overly long problem. This would certainly be combined with many others in the interview, but it's a nice taste of what you can expect from these more algorithmic problems. Of course, there are lots of other ways you could implement the idea, but it's so helpful in sort of algorithm design questions to always start by thinking about the intuition, share your thoughts about the intuition with the interviewer before you start getting bogged down trying to actually implement your idea with any code. I hope you found this question interesting. Comment below to let us know what you'd like to see next. And if you want to see more interview questions and advice on interview preparation, do remember to subscribe. If you're interested in more intensive support with your interview preparation, do also remember to visit our website. And thank you very much for watching.